Hello. Hi. And welcome back once again to Wheel Takes, a podcast about the Wheel of Time, a series of fantasy novels written by Robert Jordan and completed by Brandon Sanderson. You know who I am, probably. Probably me too, if you know who he is. If it's your first episode, this is a weird one to start with, I guess. (laughs) <laughs> this podcast, I guess I've read all the books. I, I I'm Ali, and I am a first-time reader on book 12, chapter 16. You've technically read through 17, but we're only talking about 16 today. Yeah, I wasn't sure what I should say. This podcast contains spoilers for nearly everything that Ali has already read, which today is everything up to and including The Gathering Storm, chapter 17, but we're not going to talk about chapter 17 yet. That's next episode. We're going to talk about chapter 16. Chapter 17, I'm going to have things to say. We have plenty to talk about. I have other things to say for this one. we get there. But I will have things to say. Now, to be oblique, we did a live reaction for these two chapters. And I don't know that I've ever experienced more whiplash. I know I haven't ever experienced more whiplash. And I've experienced whiplash. You've had actual whiplash. Yes. And it was still less of a shock to the system than whatever the fuck occurred between this chapter and next chapter. Well, not to get ahead of ourselves, uh, and I'm just going to munch on some jelly beans while we talk here. Um, Allie, give give me the rundown, the general gist here. You know, if we're talking about whiplash, what was the vibe from this chapter? Right now was the vibe from this chapter. Yeah. I cried. Yeah. (laughs) Many Which do. I never do in front of people. Like, you know, but I guess, I guess the people who watch the live reactions have seen me cry more than, and I don't necessarily think this is like a badge of honor or anything, but more than like some of my friends in real life. That's true. Because I don't really cry in front of anyone who isn't like you and one me, of my siblings. Me. Yeah. Um, What's the fun thing about the live reacts is it feels like we're just hanging out by ourselves. Yeah, I but think actually, that's why I feel like comfy having my stuff. Because I can't see those 40 people. Yeah. Oh my God, I cried in front of 40 people. 40 people. That's 40 more people than I've ever cried in front of. Like, I cry, but like, I'm not some like unfeeling monster. Um, I just have trauma. So like, I, it's like this thing of like, you cry in front of me first and then I'll cry. And even then, maybe not. You know, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's like a good thing. I actually think that I'm actually very envious of people's ability to cry easily, um, which I have at, in the comfort and safety of my own home. Yeah. Well, Katie's Al- seen me cry. Allie, here's many the thing. Time. Here's what I got to know. Puppies. He's lying right next to me. This is the Sorry question. Sorry to everyone for having to use my Petey voice, but I have to when I talk and do it. This... Hello, my sweet prince baby of my heart. <laughs> this is the question. Mm-hmm. Where'd we leave off? Wait, first, can I share Petey's morning affirmations? The things you say to the dog every morning after you wake up? Yes. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> I have taken to giving Petey morning affirmations because he really loves when I say good morning to him. It makes him very happy. So I say good morning, and then I say good morning, baby, and he wa- waggles his tail. Right now he's not doing it because he's confused. But I say that, and then I say, did we survive the night? I don't know why I say that. I think because he's so excited to see me that I'm like, are you celebrating because we survived? And then I say, are you smart? Are you brave? And then I say, are you capable of world domination, but to kind of pursue it? And that is Petey's morning affirmation. We love to hear it. (laughs) And I do hear it. Every day. You hear it every morning. It's great. Every morning. What did I say to him the other day that was so unhinged? Oh, I called him my liege. You did do that. I did because... um, That was today. I said, sire, may I approach? Because he was sitting very respectfully with his little dainty paws crossed. And I was like, may I approach? And I started to pet him. But then it was clear he became displeased by one of the places that I pet him because he looked away from me very abruptly. And then I said, my liege, I have erred. 
And then, and then I realized up. that Gus was listening and I cracked up. It was pretty funny. Because I'm unhinged about the dog. It's good. But I'm even more unhinged when you're not here. <laughs> I'd believe that. Well, this is what I need to know. Yes. Where did we leave off? Um, um, was it Rand and Min? Yeah, Rand Min Avienda is that whole... Yeah. Whole spiel. Yay! Oh my gosh! Look at me remembering stuff. Paties, this is one for the books. And where are we picking it up? Um, and regrettably, you do not have Egwene. notes, I know, because you were so enraptured on the live reaction. Well, yeah. I, during the live reactions, I don't I don't take notes because I think it detracts from the reaction. Well, give me the rundown on this chap. Okay. Initial reactions in addition to tears. Um. Okay, so here's how it starts. Once upon a time, there was this girl named Egwene from Bumfuck, USA. And she was held captive by a megalomaniacal, uh, egotistical piece of garbage uh, whose signature color happens uh, of the place that they belong to happens to be red, uh, named Elida. Yes. And Elida uh, is bad at running anything, Um, just not good at anything, because it turns out that when you have a draconian piece of jet fuel (laughs) running a country. (laughs) Tarvalon's more of a city state. Yeah, a draconian piece of flaming jet fuel running the country. As magic pope, if Tarvalon's a country, it kind of, but it's, it's really a country. All right, we can call it a country. I think many would call it a city state, but I'll take it. It's a country. Yeah. What is a city state if not a country? It's a city state. It's a country. It's a phalanx. I guess if we can call Vatican City, it's Vatican City. Yeah, which is a country. Technically, yes. Okay, fine. It's a micro nation. It's a country in a country. Well. It's to, a meta country. To your point, uh, Elida... I believe it's called a mandala when you're a country in, yes, within a country. Yes, I believe you're correct. That's why Lesotho was a whole thing in the geographical diversion. I just, for some reason, was like super obsessed with With fucking them. Lesotho for some reason? Yeah, because they were the easiest country for me to like figure out where it was on my because geography it's a little test. Do- aren't there two of those in South Africa? Yes, I forget what the other one is called. I don't know. Why did you fix it on Lesotho and not the other one? You're going to have to ask my brain that question because I don't know. Do you know what it's called when there? So let's say there's a little island of a different country inside of a given country. No, what are the countries? That's called an enclave. Well, that's in, there's one in, in, in India. Yes, there is. And Bangladesh because there's an enclave in an enclave. A double We've enclave. shared this We have, it's before. still cool. Kowloon Walled City was an enclave. Ah. Within Hong Kong. Anyway. Yeah, so Elida, uh, despotic ruler uh, who is flagrantly abusing and disregarding the customs of her place of governance, uh, caused several schisms on her way to power and is now sort of just... just and is ab- also kind of just embarrassing. It's kind of embarrassing. Everybody kind of probably feels kind of bad to be in the tower around her. Uh, and is I now bet she also smells is now just kind of like changing things and people are just kind of going along with it and Egwene I bet she smells and is the kind of person that's like get a different nose then and Egwene and is like, like or you could put on deodorant you fuck Egwene is like y'all need to stop just going along with this because the reason why she's able to do this is because everybody is just kind of like putting their head down y'all need to stop and acknowledge this is fucked up I'm already crying. I'm so sorry. It's a good chapter. All right. Anyway. So good chapter. <laughs> What's that about putting your head down and accepting authoritarian bullshit? Well, Gwen's whole thing here is she's like, you guys need to understand that it, the, the, you know, it's the whole thing with like, um, uh, what's her name? That, that, who's the yellow? Shamirin, who she busted down to accept it. And everybody's like, you can't, do that but she did and everybody's like well i guess you can she's just unless someone stands up to them she's just flagrantly violating all of the customs and strictures of the tower and there's all the stuff Egwene has where she talks about how how she's not upset 
that she's being abused and beaten. She's upset about what's being done to the venerable establishment that she has long been a part of. Well, long. A year and a half. But, you know, long enough. Uh, at one point, at one point, she says, I would lay down my life for this tower, Elida, would you? And I just... It's a good chapter. I really, really like this chapter. I like Egwene Alvira. I think she's got a lot of good shit going on. She's got a lot of really a lot good, of good shit going on Who doesn't here. like Egwene? I just want to talk. <laughs> that's I just not, want to talk. That's not an invitation. <laughs> no, I don't want to talk. <laughs> don't, please. Don't. Don't. I can't. My mental health can't handle arguing with strangers on the internet right now. So let's hop to... Where you want? You want to jump in? I've never said anything bad about Egwene in my life. Allie, there's more important shit we got to talk Guess about. That was supposed to be funny. It was I funny. I know. <laughs> there's more important shit we got to talk about before we get into Elida and her uh, terrible I've forms said bad of governance. About everyone, to be clear. What do we have Except to talk about Moraine. beforehand? Because Much Moraine did what? One thing wrong. What was that one thing? The long story. Yeah. I'm, I'm warming to the long story, actually. It's a fan favorite. As time goes on. Therefore, actually, Moraine did nothing wrong. Allie. She, is it she, that I'm she, growing she attached to the she story didn't clean because the fish. I want to be able to say that Moraine did. She caught the damn she thing. She clean him. That's the rule. She No. She walked up. No. She busted no. in. No. Caught three huge fucking fish and then was like, I'm she out. She did all the work. That's the rule. You catch the fish, you got to clean it. That's not the rule. Parents set that How rule that up. How is that a rule? Because that was the Parent rule. Parent would be the kind of person that's like, she cooked the meal, she should do the dishes. Fuck you. You do the dishes. <laughs> well, Allie, there's something we got to talk about before we get into Egwene's brave stand against tyranny. What is it? Nut meats. <laughs> I got very hung up during our live meats? reaction. I got very hung up on the term nut meats. Nut meats. We now, can talk about some nut meats. Everyone was like going... Allie, it's the meat of the nut. And I was like, I understand that the the meat of the nut is called the meat of the nut, that it's called the meat of a nut. I have never in my years, mo- many decades of existence, heard the term nut meat before in my nut life. Nut meats. Have you heard the word nut meat? I nut don't know. Meat. I heard meat it about of 400 the nut, yes. times during meat our of live nut. reaction. Nut meat? Nut meats. Nut meat? I have never heard such things. And it sounded massively inappropriate. Nut meats. Nut meat. So what's Egwene up to right out of the gate? Meat nuts. She's hanging out with some eyes to die. And when it goes, I'm curious to hear the novice speak. Tell me, Egwene Halvir, how would you have handled the situation? Egwene looked up from the bowl of shells. Why you ask him? Two-legged steel nutcracker in one hand, a bulbous walnut in the other. <laughs> it was no, the first time... We immediately started laughing at that. Any of the Aes Sedai present had addressed her. So she's hanging out with, what is this, some Not sitters, Not a bulbous I think? walnut. Yeah, it's the sitters. They all come and they talk to Egwene and they're like asking her all these logic questions. Well, it's a little bunch of the whites. Yes, it's... it's the three whites sat in wicker chairs at a low table. <laughs> Let's have my at a family gathering for us. <laughs> I, I was going to make three that joke on the sat live at a table. Egwene sat before them on As a wicker... you, me, and an additional white person. Egwene sat before them on a wicker stool <laughs> back to the open air, denied the view as she cracked nuts for the others. Any number of servants or kitchen workers could have done the work, but this was the sort of thing that sisters found to fill the time of novices whom they thought might be lounging about too much. Okay, the work-life balance at the tower is shit. Yeah. So We need to realize that rest is productive. It is. Bunch of fucking douchebags. Where's OSHA? I don't think this is the first time I've tried to call OSHA on the White Tower. No, it's not. I'm trying to find the words nut meats. I can't find them in here yet. <laughs> oh, it's coming. The nut meats are coming. She was, Miyasi was tall and plump, and she preferred her walnuts shelled very particularly. No fragments or broken pieces of nut for her, only full halves. <laughs> Egwene carefully pried one from the shell that she had cracked, then handed it over. The small brown lump okay, that's was wrinkled annoying. and ridged, oh? like the brain of a tiny animal. <laughs> I asked. He picked walnuts on purpose. Ferranis said coolly. What you would have done in the Amelin's place? 
Uh, consider this part of your instruction. You know that the dragon has been reborn, and you know that the tower must control him in order for the last battle to proceed. How would you handle him? How would it work with him? And Egwene is like, control him. yeah, you guys want advice, and uh, you've heard me talking shit. And not and getting I heard hit. that you was talking shit and you didn't think that I would hear it. People hear you talking like that, getting everybody fired up. So I'm ready to attack, gonna lead the pack, gonna break the down, gonna take you out. Just right, put your pom poms down, getting everybody fired up. Few times been around that track, so it's got to kind of have been like that, cause I ain't no harder back. Girl, I ain't no holler back, girl. Few times been around that track, so that's gonna happen like that. Cause I ain't no holler back, girl. I ain't no holler back, girl. Ooh, this my shit, this my shit. Ooh, this my shit, this my shit. Ooh, I make the dog dance. This my shit, this my shit. Ooh. This smash shit. Let me hear you say this shit. Is bananas. B A N A N A Yes, this shit. Is bananas. B A N A N A Yes, this shit. Is bananas. B A N A N A Yes, this shit. Is bananas. B A N A N A Yes. <laughs> I let that go on for so long, but I was enjoying making the dogs paws dance. I thought you would like the uh, the success. Yes, so. that was good. Uh, I so just showed my age. It was good. What was what was Egwene's answer here? By the way, I heard that you. <laughs> <laughs> what if? Uh, okay, about first, I would send a group of sisters to his home village. Well, you like, didn't let me guess. Guy, go ahead. Okay. So they're like, how do we control the dragon reborn? What would you do in Elida's place? Yeah. Well, I'd send a bunch of sisters to his house and they're like, to take his loved ones hostage or some shit like that. And they're like, despot? And she's like, no. To interrogate the family to learn more about him. Mm -hmm. Dumb fucks. And then I would um, I, really, have a meeting with him, I think was the next thing. Really right? quick. They go, but you already know him. And she goes, I do. But, but we were speaking of a hypothetical situation. And they go, let us assume that you are you and that he is Randall Thor, your childhood friend. Tell me. <laughs> of the types of men you listed just before, of despots and, uh, you know, what, what do we have? Calm men, uh, quick friends, etc. Which best fits this Randall Thor? And she goes, all of them. If I were me and the dragon were Rand, I'd know him to be a rational person for a man, if somewhat bullheaded. For a man? Wow. <laughs> Did you even know what you were going to say? I'm sorry. I feel like I cut you off. Oh, I know. I was just entertaining the forum. I was just entertained by the forum man. Mm. Yeah, well, you know. I was entertained. My next step would be to send sisters to him to offer guidance. And if he rejected them, then I'd send spies and Ooh. watch to see if he's changed from the man I once knew. And while you, you would wait spy again, on your friends, spy, he would terrorize the countryside, wreaking havoc and bringing armies to his banner. And is that not what we want him to do? I don't believe he should have been. He could have been prevented from taking Kalindor, should we have wanted him to be. He's managed to restore order to Kyria and unite Tyr and Ilion beneath one ruler, and presumably has gained the favor of Andor as well. She's like, scoreboard. He's doing great. Not to mention, subjugating those I yield, Miyasi said, and Egwene is like, hey, don't talk shit about my study abroad group. Hey, I study abroad there. Nobody subjugated, subjugates the I yield. And I might marry that. Older, hotter Rourke, hopefully. Ferran. Or younger, hotter, taller Rourke. Rand gained their respect. Ferran. I was with him at the time. God, she settled for Gawain when she could have had Ferran. Miyasi froze, God. hand part way to the bowl of nut meats. <laughs> that was it. That there was, was it. <laughs> there was. There was. Nut meats. And that dominated the entire live Oh reaction. my God. Nut meats. Jeez. And this is what you get paid the ticket for. Is the nut meat factor. So how does this whole conversation go? And I, I'm not just going to read the whole thing. They like her response, actually. By and large. And they yeah. ask her another question, I think. Really? I just asked her that one. 
They just ask her that one. And then she goes out into the hallway. I think it's the hallway. And she runs into Katerina. And well, I'm like, oh, great. It's you. She runs through more and more stuff about what she would do and how it's similar to but different from Elida's, as you say. She's perfect. Dump the old broad. They keep eating nuts and nut meats. Now, to be clear, before anyone goes, Allie's ages. I'm not saying we need to dump Elida because she's old. I'm just saying she is the older broad, as in she's been here already. I'm uncancelable. <laughs> uh, and they kind of dance around talking about Demise Wells, too. And also... Well, yeah, because that was a major fuck up on their parts. Oh, they also ask, they're like, why do the white Aja need to be the ones to do anything about Elida? Oh, yeah, and this she whole gives thing. really good reasons for it. She's like, well, I've talked to a bunch of other groups... And the blues are not here. Well, we also get... Wait! Sorry, go ahead. All right, no, you, ta- you talk. What, what was it? She, we also get the most cumbersome metaphor ever, which this is a joke, where she goes, In dealing with Rand now, we'd be like a farmer looking at his wagon and worrying that there aren't any goods in the bed for him to sell, but ignoring the fact that his axle is cracked. Feel the bed before it is time, and you'll just break the wagon and be worse off when you start it. All right. She's a good ruler, but she's not a good writer. All right. We got that. We get it. And then... She, and okay. Then, but here's the thing. She yes, says... She, she, yes. All right. We can't go with the reds. Obvs. Blues aren't here. Uh, browns are more interested in their books, as per use. Uh, greens? I don't remember why she said no greens. Uh, I think she's approached the greens... And they're hesitant for some reason. Uh, Yellows or what are they going to do? Heal her to death? Like, I don't know. And the grays are ineffectual. So we got to go with the whites. uh, mm. There's something in there. Something in there. Something in there. I got close. A couple of them I forgot her reasons. You're on the right track. So first, though, what I like is uh, she's like, we got to stop infighting. And, you know, band together. And Miyasi goes, The white has not caused this regrettable tension. The others acting with such abundance of uh, emotion have created and it. And she goes, um, I do believe that uh, Alviorin was of the white. The pr- uh, what? She says, The present leadership has caused it. A leadership which teaches that it's all right to still follow sisters in secret, to execute warders before their eyes and I are even brought to trial, Ooh. that there's nothing wrong with removing a sister's shawl and reducing her to an accepted, that there's nothing wrong with disbanding an entire Aja, and what of acting without the counsel of the hall in something as dangerous as kidnapping and imprisoning the dragon reborn? Ooh. Is it not expected that the sisters would be so frightened and worried? Is it not all completely logical? What has happened to us? Ooh. I will not submit. Not while doing so leaves us fractured. I will continue to assert that Elida is not the Amerlin. Her actions has proven it. You want to help battle the Dark One? Well, you're first. So then they're like, well, what, what's it our problem for? And yeah, Elida, she brings that up. And uh, sorry, uh, 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 blah, blah, blah. I'll be RN and, and how there were several whites in the fucking council that brought her down in the first place. And they're like, what about the greys? And Egwene goes, I have spoken with them. Some will not speak to me and continue to send me to penance. Others say these rifts are not their fault, but with some coaxing have agreed to do what they can. The yellows have been very reasonable, and I think they're beginning to see the problems in the tower as a wound to be healed. I am still working with several brown sisters. They seem more fascinated by the problems than worried about them. I've sent several of them looking through the histories for examples of division, hoping they'll run across the story of Rinalda Merlin. Merlin! Merlin! The connection should be easy to make, and perhaps they will begin to see that our problems here can be solved. The greens have ironically been the most stubborn. They can be very like reds in many ways, which is infuriating, as they really should be willing to accept me as one who would have been among them. That only leaves the blue, who have been banished, and the red. I doubt the sisters of that last Aja are going to be very very receptive to my suggestions. And then they try to dirty rush Egwene. Like, if you are, uh, if you do get the shawl. You should pick white. Uh, but yeah, she says and like, I'm like a clever ploy because also then if she's the Amerlin, she'll be of the white. She's like, I've got a co- they successfully dirty rusher. I've got a coalition of three Ajas. I'm asking for a fourth. <laughs> the greens apparently have their heads too far up their own asses and the blues are gone. 
She's like, I'm cooling on the greens. Yeah. Uh, really quick, we gotta take an ad break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. So. The horny girls have fallen. <laughs> yeah. Hot Limpus has fallen. <laughs> Hot Limpus. Uh, so, yeah. We, what do we got here? Um, I don't know. What else happens here? I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a little bit more. Then she runs to the hallway. She goes to the hallway, having felt like I've successfully won over the whites. Uh, what a clever girl am I. And then she runs into Katarina, and I'm like, damn it. What other, did you, did both the browns and the yellows have also tried to dirty rush her? Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Dirty yes. rush, by the way, for those who are not familiar with the term, being a term in uh, American uh, Greek life, where you try to convince somebody to join your sorority before you're supposed to. Because there's rules and shit for all that, for yeah, some Yeah, there's rules. Uh, well, because the, you want they want the freshmen's like early experiences at school to not be colored by Greek life. Like they want like the first few months of you being at school at some schools to not have anything to do with Greek life. So as you say, she leaves the room and Katarina rolls up and is like, "What up, dick fuck? Uh, you want some more tea?" And Gwen is like, "No," and she's like, "Too fucking bad. Drink up, chuckle fuck." Yeah, and she does, and then she says, have you "Good t- news." Can you tell that I've been practicing my swearing? Yeah, you have a book now. Do I still sound like I? I it's my favorite thing we've ever had said about us. It's great, it's truly one of my favorites. Um, what is Katarina here to say? Good news, and by good news, I mean bad news. You are no longer to take classes in your magic. Instead, you're just going to do chores twenty four hours a day. Because I'm a cartoon villain. Oh, yes. ah, sorry. I'm hitting the buttons with my feet and sometimes things go wrong. It's true. Yeah, no more lessons. You're done with that shit. Uh, and also, yeah, you can't go hang out with sisters anymore. You're done with that shit. You're just gonna fucking mop and weed and scrub pots and shit. It's gonna be a bad time for you. But she's not gonna get her ass beat anymore. I think she's still gonna get her ass beat. Oh. Well, then, life sucks. You are to report to the kitchens immediately. Maybe we should switch sides. You will spend every afternoon <laughs> working there. <laughs> I don't know. Life seems pretty okay being Katarina right now. I don't know. You will spend every afternoon working there. In the evenings, you will scrub floors. In the mornings, you will report to the grounds master and work the gardens. This will be your life. These same three activities every day, five hours at each one, okay, until but you gardening give gardening for a long time during the day sounds kind of nice. It's exhausting. I know, but you get to be outside in the nature. Until you give up your foolish pride and learn to curtsy to your betters. Nah. <laughs> so you understand. No more visiting sisters in their quarters, wasting their time as you practice weaves you have already mastered. No more laziness. Now you will work instead. What think you of that... And Egwene is like, okay. And Katarina's like, yeah, I thought you were going to get mad. I was told you would get mad. I was, I really expected that you would be, you'd be super mad. Sometimes Why are you revenge, not mad? Sometimes the best revenge with people is like not letting them impact you the way that they're hoping. So when we're on the couch, this is fun. You know how usually Allie slides away from the microphone? Now she's getting slowly more and more horizontal and sliding down one away the from the microphone. It's very funny. I am becoming funny. one with the couch. Uh, Allie, here's my question for you. Yes. A few weeks ago, you pitched a theory. Send in the clown. What was that? Send in the clown. Uh, there was a, a grand the conspiracy on the part of the Black Aja in the tower to dupe Gawain Tricand into attempting a defection. Oh, that's happening. In order so that his dumbass Egwene sleeper agent. His dumbassery might fuck up Egwene. Is uh-huh. this still happening now that they have effectively co- neutered Egwene? Yeah. They're still, even though it is highly likely that they did not know that he and Egwene are lovers. Plan. They have a contingency plan. Send in the idiot. Even though it is very likely that they do not know that he and Egwene are lovers. I'm not wrong until I'm wrong. I'm on board. Let's go. 
just wanted to see if that how that was holding up because I like that theory. I think it's very fun. Uh, yeah, that one, I mean, it's fun. I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent on it, but I'm not zero percent on it. You know, I'm just kind of like that would be fun. So Egwene considers popping a quick curtsy. Also, he's so dumb. Egwene considers popping a curtsy to to a light after a week just to make it seem like she's cowed, and then she's like, "No, I can't do that. If I curtsy once." I give up all my power. Yep, that's true. Can't, can't, can't lower can't my head to this. <laughs> Fuck. Um, Was that in the book? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she goes to the kitchens and she starts cleaning fireplaces and there's this bunch of stuff about her scrubbing that's very good prose. Uh, uh, and what, and she's any in thoughts the fireplace on and she's got a scrub and Loris, Queen Loris shows up. Busts in. Move your foot. I'm, I need to press a button. Good luck. You got it. Yeah, I was gonna say something about how adept my feet are, but I don't really need to do that. No. Uh, so Lara, Lara, rephrase. Laris, Laris shows up. How's it go? What's he? What's she here for? Laris is like, I'm gonna bust you out, and Egwene is like, y'all keep trying to do that, and I want to stay here. Three different people have tried to bust her out at this point. You wait here until tonight. Lara said in a low voice. I can't get you out right now, not with the tower fluttery as a yard full of hens when the fox is about, but the garbage goes out late at night, and I'll hide you among the girls who unload it. A dock worker will take you to a small Ooh, boat and row you across the river. I get to hide in the garbage. I have some friends among the guard. They'll turn the other way. Once you reach the other side, it's up to you what you do. I'd advise against going back to those fools who made you their puppet. Find some place to lie low until all this blows over, then come back and see if whoever's in charge will take you in. Isn't likely it'll be a liner the way things are going. Nah, well, it's gonna be me. In you go. I no time for jabbering. And he's like, get in the garbage. Don't worry about me. I can handle myself. I'll get keep in all the, the kitchen garbage. servants away from where you were working. Those eyes said I only check on you every half hour or so, and since they just checked a minute ago, it'll be a while before they look in again. When they do check, I can plead ignorance, and everyone will assume you slipped out of the kitchens. We'll soon have you out of the city, and nobody will be the wiser. Get Egwene in the like, garbage, girl. Egwene is like. Okay, but like, why though? What are we doing here? Laris, Laris is so funny. She's like, I think they sh- if they're going to be mean to you, they should just kill you. I'd rather you be dead than be bullied. <laughs> I won't be party to the breaking of <laughs> Which, a- I mean, <laughs> I'm glad she's taking a firm stance against bullying, but she's not taking as firm a stance as you'd hope on execution. Do you I, know what I mean? <laughs> I won't be party to breaking of a girl's spirit. These beatings are shameful. Fool, I said I, I've served loyally these years I have, but now they've told me you're to be worked as hard as I can push you indefinitely. Well, I can see when a girl's moved away from being instructed and into being beaten down, I won't have it. Not in my kitchens. Like, burn Elida for thinking she could do such a thing. Execute you or make you a novice, I don't care. But this breaking is unacceptable. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> so I can excuse racism, but I draw, I draw the, the line, line at animal cruelty. <laughs> you can excuse racism? <laughs> So uh, where is Egwene land? There's on only this? one thing worse than a rapist. Boom. A child. A child. No. So where does Egwene land on all this? Uh, so, so, Loris's priorities are a bit of a head scratcher, but she has the spirit. I mean, look, it kind of makes sense. No, I I get I get I get it. I get what she's getting she's at. Saying, this it's is just the this way is just she fucked up. Put it is so funny to me. She's like, I'd rather you be dead than bullied. Well, in a way, yeah. Laris is kind of taking a stand against. This. And now she's somebody's like, gonna be like, "Well, she's being tortured," and I'm like, "I know." Now, if you but it's wrote not, in, it's not the beat. The, the beatings if are. If you wrote in that uh, that it's about her being tortured and being being broken down. Before you heard me say that, you owe me a thousand dollars. The the beatings are really less of it. Like she was not pleased about the beatings, but the part that she, she really put her sh- over the edge is that now she's like, so we're just gonna grind you down to the fucking nubs. Yeah, for what? Eighteen hours a day. For what? Just break your spirit. That's fucked up. It is fucked up. I just think it's really funny that she's like, I don't care if you're executed, but god damn it, I'm not gonna watch your spirit be broken. I don't really think that's I just think that's a really funny way of putting that. It is. I'm so sorry. All right, we had to pause briefly, and now we're back. What were we saying? Um, what was I saying? Let's find out. Okay, we're talking about Laris. Uh, I just, I just thought her reasoning was so funny. Yeah. 
And what does Egwene say to this? Um, cool, but I'm not going. Yeah, she says, listen, as fucked up as this situation is, and as upset I am, as, uh, as upset as I am that this is happening, my running away from this problem will solve nothing. If I simply leave, all I'm going to do is watch the institutions I love collapse from the outside. And that's not going to help the people who are trapped on the inside, and it's not going to help all the people it affects. So I'm not leaving. Damn. I'm going to stay here, and I'm going to keep fighting for what I care about and for those who can't. Because Egwene Alvear fucks. This book sucks. It's a great book. <laughs> what does she know? No, she uh -huh. said to Laris. Your offer is very kind, <laughs> but I can't take it. I'm sorry. Now you listen, Laris, Egwene interrupted. One does not take that tone with an eye Sedai. No matter that one is the mistress of kitchens. She goes, fool girl, you ain't I... Wait, I she was Irish a minute ago. Fool girl, you ain't I Sedai. Except that or not, I still can't go. Unless you try, intend to try stuffing me into that hole yourself, gagging and tying me to keep me from crying out, followed by escorting me across the river in person, then I suggest letting me return to my work. But why? Because, Egwene said, glancing back at the fireplace, someone has to fight her. Wow! You can't fight like this, Laris said. Each day is a battle, Egwene said. Each day I refuse to bend means something. Ugh. Even if Elida and her reds are the only ones who know it, that's something. Stop a small it. something. But more than I could do from the outside. Come, I've still got two hours of work left. Stop. So then Katarina comes in. How's this go? Katarina's a dick. Yeah. She continues to be just a dick. She's like, hey, fucko, you're on waiter duty tonight. Time to get no tips. And that is the worst of her crimes. We're having McDonald's. Let's fucking go. She's so. slaughtered innocence, but not tipping is the worst crime. So Gwen cleans up and she's like, all right, well, what do I do now? How do I handle this? Because what's the problem here? Why, what, what's the risk? Um, They're going to see her in a subservient role. Right. And that might be bad. So then Gwen decides... It's literally down my throat at I this point. I didn't mean to do that. I the accidentally pushed the microphone. The microphone is literally I accidentally down pushed my the microphone throat. into her nose, and I did not mean to do that. <laughs> She's I am filating the microphone, the microphone at this point. going into her fucking nose. I am I'm sorry. deep throating this microphone. That was an accident. The microphone is getting the words straight from the vocal cords that was at an this accident. point. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> now she's resting her nose on the microphone well apparently that's how close i need to be sorry go ahead wait hold on perfect yeah. oh fuck okay yeah. good <laughs> actually i this is fine i can live with this oh yeah oh yeah can you live with that no i can't can you live with <laughs> I'm that sorry all right <laughs> <laughs> now that we're clear on all the right, score all here. Right, all right, all right. All right I'm sorry. Go ahead. To just um, push a microphone aggressively into my husband's face for Yeah, it's, it seems appropriate. It um, was satisfying. All right. So, what were we talking about? Oh, Katarina came in. She's a dick. Yeah. Egwene's got to be a waitress. Egwene's in some trouble because. If she's shown being subservient to Elida, people might not be able to get past it. Be and, you know, at a different time, I'd be like, Egwene, you know, you can't underestimate people this much. But I now know pretty definitively that it is impossible to um, underestimate people. Uh, so. Oh, Petey's getting off the bed for no, some No, Petey. Where are you going? Are you too hot? Bed, couch. Come back. Come could do the mummies. I'm sorry. This is what he's. Mom's you want me to pause? Is. I can pause. Wait, no, no, no. Oh, he's lying no, on the ground. Baby. No, he's good. He's oh, comfy yeah. there. You yeah, know what? I think he's too, too hot. Much. Yeah. Uh, all right. And he was like, I can't start panting because that would ruin the recording. He's very considerate. Egwene had assumed she <coughs> Egwene had assumed she'd attend Elida alone, or maybe with Maidani. Egwene hadn't for a moment considered that the dining room would be filled with women. There were five. And Elida's like, I heard that you was talking shit and you didn't think that I would hear it. One from each Aja, save the red and the blue, and each woman was a sitter. 
Yukiri was there, as was Desin, both from the clandestine hunters of the Black Aja. Farana was there, though she seemed surprised to see Egwene. Had the White not known about this dinner earlier, or had she simply not mentioned it? Well, she Rubinda, might not have known that Egwene was going to be the sweet staff. Rubinda of the Green Aja sat beside Siobhan of the Brown, a sister whom Egwene had been wanting to meet. Siobhan was one of those who supported negotiating with the rebel Aes Sedai, and Egwene hoped to be able to nudge her more toward helping unify the White Tower from within. So, there's a bunch of fucking people. So, Leda was like, I'm going to bring in the people that you've been talking to specifically. Yeah. Crafty. Decine. <laughs> oh, oh, God. How did that happen? I don't know. Allie managed to knock the entire... The microphone stands are bolted to the table. And hers has completely collapsed. I didn't do anything we'll be wrong. Right, we'll be right back. Okay, Gus just back. shoved a microphone into my esophagus. I did not. That's let not the, true. Let the record show. People are going to think you're serious. You said it was out of revenge. I poked you in the face with the microphone. Where very is your gently. esophagus? It, it's the d- bottom of the throat. Okay, throat. that's what I thought. That's what I, yeah. I bet the first second I was like, what if I'm wrong? No, that's, that's way down there. That's a sphincter. Yeah, that's what you did. You have multiple sphincters. There's also the lower esophageal sphincter. It's also your butt. That is also a sphincter. Thank you very much. For There's at least one that sphincter times. in your stomach. Good Lord, Gus. All right. All right. Anyway, we're back. I think this is polite podcast conversation. Well, you know we're that famous book for is our really polite changing podcast conversation. Which book? How to Swear. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, like, someone's got to do it. Uh, your whole setup is tilted. How did that happen? Well, I don't know. You're the one who set it up. I beefed it. All right. So. Ah, good. Elida said, noticing Egwene. You finally arrived. Come here, child. And she does. I and she simply she's like, wouldn't. Everything that you said before runs through her head where she's like, oh, man, I really can't fucking cave here. This is bad. You are to keep my cup full, Elida said. Wait there, but don't come too close. I'd rather not have to smell the soot on you from your punishments this afternoon. Um, you smell like literal butthole. So, so... <laughs> Elida starts interrogating Hard the Hard to smell me and the soot over your literal butthole stink. You don't even wash your ass. Elida starts kind of interrogating the Aes Sedai and, you know, ber- berating them and generally being awful in a lot of ways. Well, she is awful. And being and an yet, asshole. She still got elected. And, uh... And now all the Aes Sedai are like, uh... Never thought the leopards would eat my face. What was the point of this dinner? Never thought. Elida didn't seem to be making any attempt to bring the Ajas together. If anything, she was prying those rifts wider. The way she was dismissing those who disagreed with her. What? Occasionally, she would have Egwene refill her cup, but it never had room for more than a sip or two. Slowly, Egwene began to understand this dinner wasn't about working with the Ajas. It was about bullying the sitters into doing as Elida felt they should. And Egwene was simply there to be shown off. This was all about proving to the others how much power Elida had. She could take someone that others had named Amerlin, put a novice dress on her, and send her to penance every day. Oh, I never thought the leopards would eat my face. So Gwen is like, should I pour soup on the floor again? No. Do we miss Swan yet? I'm not going to pour soup Do on we the miss floor Swan again. yet? Do we miss Swan yet? We could have had a perfectly capable woman, but no, we have this fuck. And then they bring up, uh, they bring up the Sean Chan and Elida's like, what a bunch of bullshit. That's fake. And Siobhan is like, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. Like, Egwene was enslaved by them for a minute. Egwene was like high key. Petey, what are you doing? He's standing. You're looming. He's looming. Why is he looming? You need to allow our dog to stand without comment. He's looming. Every time the dog stands, Gus is like, Petey, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, now he's coming back. Oh, are you limping, bubbies? Did you zoom me too close to the sun? Did you zoom me too much? Do you need to go out? He did, in fact, need to go out. And now he has gone out. And he has come back. And we're back. 
even though we didn't take a break. This is what the people want. So, Ali, we're talking about the Sean Chan. What is a Eli- yeah. Does Elida say we should make peace? She says they're not fucking with the real. Shawn- yeah, she's like, what a bunch of bullshit. And they're like, oh well, you God. know, Girly Pop over here was enslaved by them. And she's like, yeah, well, we know how much <laughs> bullshit she spouts. Yeah. She's full of bullshit. Ugh. So fucking bullshit. And, uh... She's such an idiot. Ugh. You know how the child is prone to exaggerate. Have you been spreading lies for your friend, the fool Althor? What did he tell you to say about these invaders? They're working for him, are they not? Egwene didn't respond. Speak. Elida said, gesturing with her cup. Tell these women you've been speaking lies. Confess, or I'll have you in penance again, girl. Uh, and she goes, I wasn't lying. They're real. And you're stupid. As Egwene glanced down the long mahogany table set with bright white seafolk porcelain and flickering red candles, she saw five pairs of eyes studying her. She could see their questions. Egwene had spoken boldly to them when alone, but would she hold to her assertions now, faced by the most powerful woman in the world? A woman who held Egwene's life in her hands? Was Egwene the Omerlin, or was she just a girl who liked to pretend? Light burn you, Elida, she thought. Silence wouldn't lead to victory, not in front of these women. You are not going to like how this proceeds. The Shan Chan are not working for Rand, Egwene said, and they are a severe danger to the White Tower. I have spread no lies. To say otherwise would be to betray the Three Oaths. Now, Allie, there's a non-zero chance I just read almost all of this dialogue. I say you do. You haven't taken the three oaths, Elida said. I have, Egwene said. I've held no oath, Rod. But it isn't the rod that makes my words true. I have spoken the words of the oaths in my heart. And to me, they're more, they are more dear, for I have nothing forcing me to hold to them. And by that oath holding me, I tell you again, I am a dreamer. And I have dreamed that the Shan Chan will attack the White Tower. And Elida goes, oh, stubborn as ever, I see. I shall have to tell Katarina that she was right. You'll have penance for your exaggeration, child. These women know I don't speak lies. And each time you insist that I do, you lower yourself in their eyes. Even if you disbelieve my dream, you must admit that the Shanchan are a threat. They leash women who can channel, using them as weapons with a kind of twisted terangrial. I have felt that collar on my neck. I still feel it sometimes in my dreams. My nightmares. The room fell still. You are a foolish child, Elida said, obviously trying to pretend that Egwene was no threat. Well, you force my hand. You will kneel before me, child, and beg forgiveness. Right now. Otherwise I will lock you away alone. Is that what you want? Don't think that the beatings will stop, however. You'll still get your daily penance. You'll just be thrown back in your cell after each one. Now kneel and beg forgiveness. The sitters glanced at one another. There was no backing down now. Egwene wished it hadn't come to this, but it had. And Elida had demanded a fight. It was time to give her one. And if I do not bow before you? Egwene asked. What then? You will kneel, one way or another. Elida growled, embracing the source. You'll use the power on me? Egwene asked calmly. Do you have to resort to that? Have you no authority without channeling? It is within my rights to discipline one who isn't showing proper respect. And so you will make me obey. Is this what you will do to everyone in the tower, Elida? An Aja opposes you, and it is disbanded. Someone displeases you, and you try to destroy her right to be Aes Sedai. You will have every sister bowing down before you by the end of this. Nonsense. Oh? And have you told them about your idea for a new oath, sworn on the oath rod by every sister? An oath to obey the Amarlin and support her? I deny it, Egwene said. Deny that you made the statement. Will the oaths let you? How are we feeling about all this? Um, I want to just read. I mean, it, I just, I, this is just so good. It's so fucking good. It was idle talk, Elida said. Just speculation. Thoughts spoken out loud. You locked, there is often truth in speculation. You locked the dragon reborn himself in a box. You just threatened to do the same to me in front of all these witnesses. People call him a tyrant. But you're the one destroying our laws and ruling by fear. Damn. Go ahead. And then she, she starts to weave a gag of air and Egwene goes, Go ahead. Use the power to silence me. As Amarlin, shouldn't you be able to talk an opponent into, into obedience rather than resorting to force? I don't need to rebut a mere novice. Amarlin doesn't explain herself to one such as you. Mm. And then she starts quoting text. She throws the book at her, Allie. Yeah. 
She just goes, receipts, timeline, bank statement. What's that? What's that? I don't know the whole sound. sound? I wish I did. This is the kind of like winning an argument that like I like have once I get home from the argument. (laughs) The Amarlan understands the most complex of creeds and debates, yet in the end she is the servant of all, even the lowest of laborers. That had been said by Balladeer Arundela, the first Amarlan to be raised from the brown Aja. She'd used the words in her last writings before her death. Those writings had been an explanation of her reign and what she had done during the Carvathan Wars. Literary. Arundela had felt that once a crisis had passed, it was the moral duty of an Amarlan to explain herself to the common people. Siobhan nodded appreciatively. Appreciatively. I think that actually... We should adopt that for our presidents. I like it. Eli- you have to explain yourself. Elida goes, what's this nonsense you're sputtering? What did you intend to it's do? It's called books. With Randall Thor once you captured him. I don't. You're not answering me, Egwene said. But them. Have you explained yourself, Elida? What were your plans? Or will you dodge this question just as you have the others I've asked? I would have kept him secure and well shielded here in the tower until it was time for the last battle. That would have prevented him from causing the suffering and chaos he's created in many nations. It was worth the, worth the risk of angering him. And she she qu- quotes the Koreathan cycle and is like, how the fuck are you going to get the prophecies done? Good question. How did you expect him to fulfill the prophecies if he was hidden away in the White Tower? How is he to cause war as the prophecies say he must? How was he to break the nations and bind them to him? How could he slay his people with the Sword of Peace or bind the Nine Moons to serve him if he was locked away? Do the prophecies say that he will be unfettered? Do they not speak of the chaos of his passing? How can anything pass at all if he is kept in chains? I, your logic is astounding, Elida, Egwene said coldly. At that, Farana smiled slyly. <laughs> Elida said, you ask meaningless questions, the prophecies would have to have been fulfilled. There was no other way. So you're saying your attempt to bind him was destined to fail? No, not at all. We shouldn't be bothering with this. It's not for you to decide upon. No, we should be talking about your rebels and what they've done to the White Tower. She's like, well, we're trying to fix the shit, actually. Yeah, we're working on it. We cannot change what has happened. We can't change what you did to Swan, even if those with me did discover a method of healing her stilling. We can only move forward and try our best to smooth the scars. What are you doing, Elida? Refusing talks? Trying to bully the sitters into withdrawing? Insulting Ajas that are not your own? And I mean, Elida won't even debate with her. What bullshit? Yeah. (laughs) That drew Elida's eyes and she fell silent for a moment, as if realizing she had lost control of the debate. Enough of this! Coward. Egwene said. Elida's eyes flared wide. How dare you? I dare the truth, Elida, Egwene said quietly. You are a coward and a tyrant. I'd name you Dark Friend as well, but I suspect that the Dark One would perhaps be embarrassed to associate with you. And how does Elida take this? Uh, poorly. Yeah, what's she do? She, like, throws Egwene against a wall. She hurls her against the wall. And then just starts beating and the just ever-loving starts... fuck out of her. Which is a very measured Amerlin response. She has a total fucking tantrum meltdown. You name me Dark Friend? You are Dark Friend. You and those rebels outside who seek to distract me from doing what must be done. And they start, she's just beating the shit out of her. And everyone's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You gotta stop. This is fucked up. And she's like, I'll hit you next. Don't, don't doubt me. I also like this. Elida! Farana yelled, standing. You violate tower law. You cannot use the power to punish and initiate. I am tower law, Elida raved. You mock me. I know you do it behind my back. You show me deference when you see me, but I know what you say, what you whisper, you ungrateful fools. After what I've done for you, you think I'll suffer you forever? Take this one as an example. And that she just beats the shit out of Egwene for, like, a page. What happened to Elida, dude? I just, what happened to Elida? She's been this way this whole time. Sure, yeah. What do you mean, what happened to Elida? I don't know. She's more of the same. Yeah, she's just cracked. She's just cracked. She's just lost her shit. She's just realized that she's crappy and got called out on it. And now she can't handle that because she knows it's true. And what, Egwene said evenly, am I to be an example of Elida? The beating continued. Oh, how it hurt. Tears formed in the corners of Egwene's eyes, but she had felt worse. Far worse. 
She felt it each time she thought of what this woman was doing to the institution she loved. Her true pain was not from the wounds, but from how Elida had acted before the sitters. I wish I weren't needed here, Elida, Egwene said softly. I wish that the tower had a grand armorlin in you. I wish I could step down and accept your rule. I wish you deserved it. I would willingly accept execution if it would mean leaving a competent armorlin. The White Tower is more important than I am. Can you say the same? And Elida's like, well, g- get fucked. You want execution? Elida bellowed. Well, you shall not have it. Death is too good for you, dark friend. I shall see you beaten. Everyone shall see you beaten until I am through with you. Only then will you die. Send for soldiers. I want this one cast into the deepest cell this tower can provide. Let it be voiced through the city that Egwene Alvier is a dark friend who has rejected the Amarlin's grace. It had come to a head, as she'd feared mm. that it would. She had cast her lot, but she didn't fear for her life. Instead, she feared for the White Tower. As she leaned back against the wall, thoughts fading, she was overcome with sorrow. Her battle from within the tower was at an end, one way or another. And that's the end of the absolute fucking banger that is chapter 16. So good. Like, literally, tears. Tears everywhere. Anything else you want to say about this chap, apart from the fact that it's a fucking amazing chapter and I love everything about it? This book fucking sucks. I love it. Anyway. Good chapter. Yeah. Good chapter. Good one. Uh, okay. Uh. Good chapter? Yeah. Good chapter. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. We have social media. If you want to know what we've got going on, it's linked down below. We also have a Patreon if you want to support us that way. It's patreon.com slash wheeltakes. And you can always leave us a rating and or a review if you would like to. It helps a lot. Other than that, anything else, Sally? Um, the (laughs) Pades. Thanks for listening, everyone. Bye. Bye.